Welcome back folks for a new episode of Leaked, and today we'll cover the creme de la creme of the Swedish hybrid line, the tier 10 creme van heavy tank. So why do I use a French term for this vehicle? The creme van is based off the AMX 50 project, especially looking like the AMX 5120. So this is a medium slash hybrid of a heavy tank. So it comes off the Emil 1 and Emil 2, and all these vehicles are autoloaders. So these have about four rounds for 120 millimeter shell. So like the AMX 5120, but there are a few slight differences. Now, if you're new to the channel, or if you do not know anything about the Swedish vehicles coming soon, I highly recommend you watching the preview videos popping up right now. So we covered a lot of stuff, but let's take a look at the Kremvan. So what is a Kremvan? Kremvan is a moniker. It's a false name given to this vehicle to confuse spies. So it means a crane vehicle, a construction vehicle, not a real heavy tank, but that's a moniker as a confusing false name. So this project was meant to defeat the Russians, the Russian IS-3 in particular, but there were a few, you know, mishaps. So project design delays, uh, resource requirements were tough, so it cost a lot of money, expensive, and designs of the 150 millimeter ammo and munition was very difficult. So that failed. And this whole project never made past the prototype phase. So in reality, this vehicle is actually called the Mil 2 alternate number three version of the tank. So it's coming off of the Mil 1 and Mil 2 from tier eight and tier nine, but this vehicle was meant to carry a 150 millimeter autoloading smoothbore gun, which in world of tanks standards, it's super broken, so high caliber smooth bores or any smooth bores that was made before or after 1960s is technically broken for the game because of the high penetration. So if you want to know about the old guidelines of pigeon holding, the pigeon holding old vehicles, it's that the vehicles with smooth bore guns could not be made unless they have a rifle gun to go with it. So Yep, this version of the tank only has 120 millimeter rifled automatic loader, auto loader system thing. So here you can see the actual hull of this vehicle it exists, but they never made the turret. So the resource materials and reference were not as reliable. So if he owned that part, but it looks a lot like the AMX 5120. So here are the dummy hull versions of this tank. So you can see the dummy hull. This is the model. They never made the actual turret, but they did plan on fitting 150 millimeter smoothbore gun onto it. Never made the actual ammunition. The ammo failed. So never made the turret and this vehicle was scrapped. So here are the in-game models of this tank. So as you can see, it looks a lot like the AMX 5120, except it has better sloping on the hull. So it looks like a hybrid of an AMX 5120 with AMX 50B. So it's a lot lower. The silhouette is lower. So it's more of a medium slash heavy tank, but it does have the armor. So I like the look of it, but we'll cover the Emil 1 and Emil 2, and you will see that this vehicle is basically the same as the tier nine Emil 2. So that's kind of disappointing, but we'll get to it later. So here are the in-game screenshots. There are no textures yet for this vehicle. So it looks a lot like a plastic army soldier vehicle. Obviously there's no textures, but you can get the gist of this vehicle. So it has a lot of gun depression for our autoloader. And that's the whole basis of the Swedish vehicle. That's their main feature is that they have a lot of gun depression with their guns. And some of them has turret armor. So most of these vehicles have about 12 degrees to 15 degrees of gun depression. So they should be very good on hills, even better than American tanks or British tanks. So looks a lot like AMX 5120, except it's smaller. So just take note, but here are the collision models of the Kremvan. So here are the points to consider before we do the inspection. 
So as you can see, it looks a lot like the AMX 5120, but the sloping is better. It's dramatically different of a turret design than the conventional, or not conventional, the regular oscillating turrets. So it has a crease for the gun, but the whole turret is a single piece. So I'll draw it for you. So as you can see, the gun only moves when tilting this part of the gun. So this is a crease. It's not like normal autoloaders where the normal crease is right here. So if you know the AMX 50B or the T57 Heavy, they usually have the oscillating turret support right here to hold the upper parts of the turret while the upper parts are moving up and down with the gun. But for this vehicle, it doesn't have that. It's just this gun moving up and down. And I'll show you the difference coming right up, but it's a different oscillating turret, quote unquote. It's not an oscillating turret. So understanding the turret is very important to understand the armor of this vehicle because it's actually pretty thick armor for the turret. It doesn't look like it. It's only 170 millimeter, but we'll get to the actual sloping. So let's turn off the pen. And we'll go take a look at the whole comparison. Now, there are no sh uh, screenshots of the actual size comparison of this vehicle. So I'm just going off of historical size recommendations or presumptions. So take it with a grain of salt. Now, also, designs were based off the IS-3 hull and the French oscillating turrets, but it's a whole lot different than those vehicles. So, yeah, just keep that in mind, all right? It's not the same usual stuff. Also note, the side and rear armor are crap, super weak. So it's only 37 millimeter. Will get easily penetrated by most guns, overmatch easily. So it's like the IS-3's top of the turret uh, gun access port. So super easy to overmatch and you get wrecked by most caliber guns of tier 10. So here is the frontal armor. As you can see, the cupolas are very small, so don't even think about it. The driver hatch is near parallel to the hull, so to the roof of the hull, but it looks pretty weak. About the same color or same color coordination as the side armor, so based on color coding, yeah, it looks to be very weak, so you could overmatch the driver hatch and possibly penetrate and destroy the turret ring, destroy the gunner, the driver, maybe the gun. So be cautious. Now, but using the side armor, as you can see, yeah, you could overmatch most guns. I mean, it could be overmatched by most guns, but if you're facing 105 millimeter, like most medium tanks of tier 10, then this shouldn't be a problem. So. There are a few technicalities, but just be cautious. The turret front is well sloped, so it's angled and sloped upwards. So it's 45 degrees, sloped upwards with 60 degrees of angling. So this is about 277 millimeters effective. And with the hull down position of the gun depression, it's even thicker. So this turret is actually very strong, but yeah, it should be the main selling point of the Cranvon. Now, gun supports and encasements are pretty strong as well. So slightly rounded, 280 millimeter. I'll zoom in. But as you can see, the gun supports right here and the encasement right here is very thick. However, you still have a weak spot around the gun right here. So this is like 40 millimeter, 50, but uh, try not to get hit, but still it's a small area. So who knows? But as you can see, the turret ring is also very well rounded and super thick, 280. So the turret is fairly strong on most parts. Hull front is pike shaped and sloped. The upper glacis is about 105 millimeter with 30 degrees of sloping from the normal axis and 60 degrees from the horizontal axis. So it's about 210 to 240 millimeter effective, give or take, take it with a grain of salt. So we need the actual model to test, but should be about there. So 200 millimeter plus. Lower plate is 150 at about 45 degrees. So about 212 mil uh, millimeters effective. So it's yeah, still pretty decent for a heavy tank that's small compared to the AMX 5120. And here is the side armor. So no armor on the side. Don't even think about it. 37 millimeter. Yeah, you're not going to 
found a lot of shots with side scraping so don't side scrape bad idea and let's move on <laughs> no armor on the side but here is to understand how the turret works now unlike traditional oscillating turrets this turret is a single piece so with the actual mounting of the gun at the back so as you can see with the amx 50b right here and the t57 heavy they have the support in the middle but i'll draw just to showcase the difference so here you can see the lower parts of the turret right here with this triangle that's the support of the main turret same goes for the amx 50b that's the main support right here and the top is the second piece of the turret this is the oscillation part of the oscillating turret so these aren't the moving parts but this is always parallel to the gun so you always get shot if your gun is always pointed towards your enemy same goes for the t57 heavy right here so this is the second piece to the gun always parallel but for the cranvon it's different the mounting of the gun is on this part of the triangle so or trapezoid mathematicians whatever <laughs> so as you can see the mounting of the gun is different and the top of the turret is not exposed so you're only getting shot at a static piece of the hull which is sloped at this point it's not like the parallel you know not sloping of the upper parts of the turret on the oscillating turrets so once you get shot in this parts it has a better sloping than getting shot on these parts of the oscillating turrets so it's better it's a lot better than the t57 heavy or the amx 50b so yeah this is the actual tier 10 heavy tank oscillating quote unquote autoloading heavy tank with armor for the turret so you can see the shots with the parallels but yeah this part is bigger than the support and it's a lot thicker so better sloping will bounce a lot more shots so here are the main stats for the cranbon it's a tier 10 swedish normal heavy tank coming from the hybrid line of mediums and lights but it has a crew of three so surprising normal matchmaking it has a commander a gunner and a driver all of them are loaders for the commander and the gunner and the driver is also the radio operator i believe or one of the which but it's like the batch at so surprising will cost you 6.1 million credits so that's the default tier 10 cost has 1900 hit points uh low way below average for a heavy tank so it's like a medium engine power is 900 horsepower weighs about 45 tons so horsepower per ton ratio is quite good for heavy 20.09 top speed of 60 kilometers per hour reverse of 18. hull traverse is slightly below average at 25 degrees per second turret traverse is very bad about 21 degrees per second terrain resistance is slightly below average for hard and medium but pretty decent slightly above average for soft view range is 390 meters that's eight meters less than the average so pretty bad but it's all right i guess radio range is superfluous so above 700 still pretty decent hull armor is 105 at the front 37 the sides 37 at the rear so always point frontally towards your enemies turret armor is 170 at the front 70 at the sides 40 at the rear so point towards your enemies the gun is 120 millimeter l40 has only 40 rounds so this could be a problem so like the fe215b that vehicle has 36 or 37 rounds and if you're accurate if you're spamming it you will run out of shots so this could be a problem but we'll see fires apcr high explosive into tank and high explosive so the fault ammo is relatively fast compared to ap shells but the penetration is kind of bad 242 millimeters for apcr Ooh, that's rough i mean think about it this way the e100 has 235 millimeters of pin this is only seven more millimeters so yeah a lot of e100 players spam high explosive anti-tank shells which are 350 millimeter of penetration whatever so this vehicle might rely on the gold shell which sucks so be careful with this gun the alpha is the same as the other autoloading 120 so 400 alpha 
and 515 for high explosive, but normally you do not load high explosive for these vehicles, like the T57 Heavy or the AMX 50B. You never load high explosive, especially with vehicles like the Batchat. So yeah, high explosive is useless. It's auto loading for round clip, where the fire is bad, 5.187 rounds per minute, DPM of only 2,075. <sighs> this is garbage. This is crap. This is a tier 8 heavy tank standard or pretty good tier 8 heavy tank but for a tier 10 that's terrible. The AMX 50B has 2650. The T57 heavy has 3200. So yeah, <laughs> this is garbage. Reloads every 34.266 seconds. Each shell will take four seconds to load within the clip. So compare this to the 2.5 seconds on the AMX 50B or the two seconds on the T57 Heavy. And holy crap, this feels like an eternity. So Jesus, God, that sucks. Accuracy is 0.345, which is slightly above average. So pretty good. Aim time is 2.88 seconds. So it's a Russian gun. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. But gun depression is 12 degrees. So that's like a comet. So pretty good gun depression. Elevation is not that great. Only 10 degrees. So, I mean, think about it this way. The T57 heavy tank has 8 degrees of gun depression, which is pretty good also. But it has 12 elevation. So you're basically shifting the gun slightly around somewhat. But just keep that in mind. But... Here are the actual stats from the Russian tank inspector. So take a note of the DPM, take a note of the penetration, accuracy, traverse, ugh, gun depression, mobility, health. It weighs 44.8 tons, which is 50 or not 50, 33% less than the AMX 50B. The AMX 50B weighs about 65 tons, surprisingly. Fires APCR, high explosive into tank high explosive has only one gun currently the 120 so it doesn't have the 105 that's on the tier 9 so you cannot opt out of using this gun has low view range camouflage is also not as good so just be wary but also take note of the crew so commander driver gunner and 40 rounds low hip yeah low hp and weight but but here are the final thoughts and opinions about the krembon so it's Swede, surprisingly. I mean, we thought it's going to be the Polish starting the beginning of this year. So we thought the Polish were coming this year. Next, we thought it's going to be a year of the fi uh, fixes. So patches and updates with artillery, matchmaker, whatever. But nope, let's get the Swedes. <laughs> so surprise, it's not it. Also, it's almost the exact same vehicle as the Tier 9 in Mil 2 with some slight collision slash textual difference, but not that much. So in reality, this vehicle is the ML2 alternate number three version of the vehicle with better engine, supposedly, and 150 millimeter smooth board gun. But in reality or in the game, it looks almost the same. So the strength of this vehicle is the high gun depression for autoloaders. Horsepower per time ratio is pretty good with a better top speed of most heavy tanks, so it's fast. But it has some armor too, so we need the actual resource, the actual model in Tank Inspector to play around with. But it does have the armor, surprisingly. Now the weakness is dramatic. So low DPM, pretty long aim time, crappy penetration, intershell reload, that's the reload between each shell in the clip, is long, four seconds. Traverse is bad for the hull and the turret, Hit points, low, like a medium. Gun elevation is garbage. And view range is subpar. So that's a lot of stuff to trade for better gun depression than most vehicles. So is it worth to have the turret armor as well as the gun depression for the DPM and the whole gun characteristic of an autoloader? So yeah, that's food for thought, but holy crap, 2000 DPM, so low. So vastly inferior gun 
compared to the 120 that's on the AMX 50B or the T57 Heavy. So the gun's crap. The AMX 50B has less horsepower uh, horsepower per ton ratio, slightly by 0 0.8, 0 0.7 ish, but not that much. But it has 50% better traverse with 5 kilometers per hour top speed faster and the same terrain resistance. So the AMX 50B has better mobility. Also, the T57 Heavy has less effective armor on the turret and crappier gun depression, but it has 60%, 60% more DPM. 2000 compared to 3200. Holy crap, that's a lot. <laughs> and 50% faster intershell reload with 0 0.01 better accuracy, dispersion. So Jesus, man, come on, what's the selling point of the crime bond? So it's a horrible gun, not for bursting or sniping. So aim time is long and the accuracy is all right, 0 0.345, but not the best. So the main selling point of the crime bond is it's a creeper. It likes to watch you, but the gun cannot do anything. So when it's hauled down on a hill with 12 degrees of gun depression, you cannot penetrate the turret whatsoever. It's very hard, but it can only watch you. So it's a stalemate, but it can slowly peck at you by shooting at your weak spot. Whereas you have to aim for the gun encasement green area that's around the gun, but that's a small target. So it's a stalemate. It likes to watch people from a hill and they cannot do much without artillery support. So that's the stalemate, but actual autoloader with armor other than the AMX 50B or the T57 Heavy, so more reliable armor. And I think the 150mm or supposedly 155 from the Americans was going to be too OP for this vehicle. So, I mean, if you're going to have 2000 DPM with like three shells of 150mm autoloader that has four seconds of intershell reload, then this vehicle might be very interesting, but it does not have it. So it's not like the Waffen Trigger off E100 with the autoloading 150. I mean, if it does have that with the turret armor, I believe people will actually play with this vehicle. But as it stands, there's nothing special about this vehicle other than the turret armor or the hull armor or the gun depression, but it's a watcher. It likes to watch you and that's it. It cannot do anything else but watches you. So yeah, that's the crime bond in a nutshell, but I could be wrong. So take it with a grain of salt. And as always, leak videos are preliminary, so they're subject to change, but here are the initial stats of the vehicle. So just to inform you of the shaping of the Swedes coming soon. Now here is a comparison of the Emil 2 with the Krambon. Can you tell the difference? So which one is the Krambon? You have watched a whole leak episode about the Krambon. Which one is it? So the only difference I can tell is the splashboard right here. So there's a splashboard difference. Some of the tow hooks or tow uh, loop thing is a little bit different. The cheeks are a little bit different. And the turret is slightly different, but not that much. So this is the Emil 2. This is the Cranbot. The collision models are slightly different, but the whole vehicle shape, the whole vehicle size are the same. So kind of disappointed because we don't get the IKV-91, which could be a medium tank or light tank, but whatever. So mm, that's the sweets for you. So surprisingly, for 2016, we're getting the same crap, identical crap. So let's give you some examples. The KV-122, yeah, already talked a lot about it. The Sherman, Sherman Jumbo. The Pershing Jumbo looks a lot like the Pershing, but stats are different, but still looks like it. We have the Cranvon, which looks almost the same as the Tier 9 ML2. The STRV 103-0 series looks a lot like the B series. So, I mean, it's a lot of tanks, new tanks, but I already talked about how to improve World of Tanks. And Wargaming is diverging, shying away from their main objective main objective for this year, which is fixing and remodeling World of Tanks rather than adding new stuff. But there you go, folks. The tier 10, creme de la creme. 
of the Swedish hybrid line. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.